looks like it, yeah. The November 1st, 2017 Planning Commission will now come to order. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Gail Schick. Present. Victor Tallon. Present. Doug Dennison. Present. Charles Schinner. Here. Jerry Bushelman. Present. Dan Foreman. Present. Tim Annabel. Present. Ken Bennett. Here. First item on tonight's agenda is a review of the agenda itself by the Planning Commission for any addition of items or new business to be added to the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move that we keep the agenda as written. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Tallon, second by Commissioner Schinner that we accept the agenda as presented. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries unanimously. The next item is public invited to be heard. If there is anyone in the audience who has an item they wish to present to the commission that is not on tonight's agenda, now is the time to do so. And if you do have something to present, if you could come up to the podium, give us your name and address. Seeing there be none, we'll keep moving. Uh, next item is the consent calendar. This evening's consent calendar consists of the approval of the minutes of the September 20th, 2017 meeting and the October 18th, 2017 meeting. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the September 20th and the October 18th, 2017 meetings. Second. Moved by Commissioner Talon, second by Commissioner Animal, that we accept the minutes as presented. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no carries unanimously moving on to the board action items uh, first item is a recommendation to the town board for amended master plan great western second and annexation paul thank you mr chair planning commissioners this uh, amended master plan has been reviewed in accordance with article 2 section 15 we didn't have a spiel did you None of this one. Next one. <laughs> um, the site is located to the southeast of Eastman Park Drive and State Highway 257. Current zoning is a mix of residential mixed use, general commercial, and limited industrial. Uh, businesses, excuse me, properties to the north are made up of various businesses and are zoned general commercial and limited industrial. Properties to the east are the former Kodak campus and are in unincorporated Larimer County. Properties to the south are include the town of Windsor um, property. It's zoned recreation and open space. And to the, <clears throat> to the west is Water Valley Village, a general commercial zoned area as well as single family homes zoned residential mixed use. The primary purpose of this amended master plan is to modify the land uses depicted on the western portion of the existing master plan. The eastern portion of the existing master plan uh, makes up the area along Great Western Drive and is not a part of this proposed amendment. The amendment would replace uses allowed under the residential mixed use zone district as the primary land use with those allowed under the heavy industrial zone district as the primary land use. 
there will be only a limited scope remaining of potential residential development. So with that limited development, the proposed park site and school site previously shown on the master plan have been removed. Also proposed as a means of giving the landowner greater flexibility for future development is designating certain parcels as either general commercial or limited industrial uses and designating other parcels, parcels as either general commercial or multifamily. Um, so that would give greater flexibility when those parcels do develop to choose which, which of those uses they would develop under. The master plan and associated planned unit development, which is later on the agenda tonight, <clears throat> address the proximity of heavy industrial to multifamily uses um, and to the State Highway 257 corridor by limiting industrial and or general commercial as a, excuse me, by using limited industrial and general commercial as a buffer. Uh, also proposed are some restrictions on building heights and outdoor storage on the westernmost portion of the master plan. The acreage devoted to the different land uses in the 2006 plan and in the proposed amendment are listed um, so you can see the comparison. The proposal is in conformance with the comprehensive plan, including Chapter 5B growth framework, the goal as well as the objective number one. It's also in conformance with Chapter 5C residential areas framework plan, goal and objective four. Staff recommends planning commission for to town board a recommendation of approval of the amended master plan subject to all outstanding planning commission and staff comments being addressed. Uh, I do want to note the applicants are here. Should you have any questions for them? And that's all I have. A uh, quick question for you, Paul. The area to the east, yeah, that noted as unincorporated Lerm County? Uh, should be Weld. Hmm? Should say unincorporated Weld County? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just was wondering if I was in the right area there. <laughs> All right. Do the applicants have any information they want to provide? Good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Josh Rowland. I'm with LAI Design Group. I'm representing the applicant this evening on our um, master plan and, and rezoning. Uh, you know, the, the presentation that staff gave, um, very informative. I don't need to repeat the same information. We just wanted to make ourselves available uh, to you all to answer any specific questions. We've worked for a long time with staff on this, and uh, I think we've come up with a plan that everybody's very happy with and we feel like is both protects the um, the, the well-being of the our, our neighbors to the to the west and and to the north and keeps good character along the major roadways as well as uh, making use of of a, of a good business oriented uh, use that's out there today already so with that I'll just uh, be available for questions and okay. uh, we appreciate your time this evening okay thank you any questions or comments from the commission anyone Yes. Mr. Chair, Mr. Allen? just uh, going back in history, I remember when they had changed that all over to, into uh, residential, and we had the big, the big. Uh, we had late, big, gun, big guns come out. The big guns <laughs> in the late meetings, and, and now we're back to where we were when we started. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing concept. Isn't it? Yeah, if you stick around long enough, everything comes full circle. So. <laughs> so. Mr. Chair, uh, I would uh, like to move forward to the town board recommendation of approval of the amended master plan subject to all outstanding planning commission and staff recommendations. Second. <clears throat> Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Talon, seconded by Commissioner Bushelman, that we forward a recommendation of approval of the amended master plan to the town board subject to all outstanding planning commission staff comments being addressed. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. And the motion carries unanimously.
moving on to our next item, which is a public hearing. So we will close our regular meeting, open up a public hearing for zoning proposal to create a planned unit development overlay district on approximately 601 acres known as Great Western Second Annexation PUD. Paul. Mr. Chair, for the record, I'd like to disclose that I'm a sitting member of the town board and that I'm here in my capacity as non-voting liaison to the Planning Commission. Although I will be present during this public hearing, I will not be giving any my opinion or participating in the discussion. I will not let tonight's proceedings influence or affect my review of this matter when it comes before the town board. I will make my decision at the town board level based only on the evidence presented during the town board public hearing. Okay, thanks, Ken. I think we're going to have to get Ian to write you a new one. That's getting a little old. <laughs> Make it short. <laughs> short. <laughs> okay, Paul, your floor. This uh, planned unit development has been reviewed in accordance with the municipal code regulations, which address PUDs and, among other things, states they are intended to provide flexibility in land planning and development, resulting in amenable relationships between building and ancillary uses and permitting more intensive use of land where well-designed, excuse me, well-related open space <coughs> and recreational facilities are integrated into the overall design. The same site location as the master plan previously before you, and it is a to totals just over 600 acres. Again, the current zoning is a mix of general commercial, limited industrial and residential mixed use. The subject rezoning application would create a PUD overlay district, which constitutes an amendment to the town's official zoning uh, map, and the minimum standards approved with the PUD will be applied to future land use applications within the PUD district. The PUD proposes variations to allowed uses. It modifies building height regulations, provides additional limits on outdoor storage, and applies the commercial corridor plan to an area otherwise not subject to that plan. The purpose of these changes are to provide greater flexibility in future development and create greater compatibility between the heavy industrial use and both residential uses, as well as the State Highway 257 corridor. This is consistent with the intent of the PUD regulations. The PUD plat is broken into north and south, so the north side, this would be Eastman Park Drive, State Highway 257. You can see there's, it's kind of layered with the heavy industrial, more towards the interior. Um, higher height standards in this dashed area, more restrictive height standards um, in this dashed area. It serves more as a buffer with the option for commercial or multifamily in some of these parcels um, adjacent to 257. And the south side of the plat as well. The applicant did hold a neighborhood meeting in December of 2015. There were three neighbors in attendance and enclosed our meeting summary top that um, cover topics discussed at that meeting. The proposal is in conformance with the comprehensive plan, particularly Chapter 5B, Growth Framework, Goal and Objective 1. And notification was sent for this proposal, as shown on the map before you, for both the neighborhood meeting as well as this and the town board public hearing. Staff recommends Planning Commission forward to town board a recommendation of approval of the planned unit development subject to all outstanding planning commission and staff comments being addressed. Staff requests the following be entered into the record. Application, supplemental materials, staff memo, supporting documents, all testimony received at the public hearing, and the recommendation. Again, the applicants are present, and that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Paul. Since this is the public hearing portion of the process, is there anyone in the audience who has any questions or comments pertaining to this agenda item? If you do, if you could come to the podium and give us your input. Move to close the public hearing. Second. 
And moved by Commissioner Talon, second by Commissioner Foreman, that we close the public hearing. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. And motion carries unanimously. We will now reopen our regular meeting, moving on to the next agenda item, which is the recommendation of the town board for a zoning proposal to create a PUD overlay district. Anything further, Paul? Nothing further. Okay. Anything from the applicant that you wish to add? Okay. Comments, Mr. questions from the commission? Chairman. Gary. Does the underlying zoning need to be changed or does the PUD just overcome that? The underlying zoning um, does remain in place and the it remains as kind of a catch-all in case there's anything the PUD were to miss. Um, Any other questions, comments? Mr. Chair, I move that we forward to the town board recommendation of approval of the PUD overlay uh, subject to all uh, planning and staff comments. Second. And moved by Commissioner Talon, second by Commissioner Bushelman, that we forward a recommendation to the town board of approval for the planned unit development subject to all planning commission and staff comments being addressed. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. And the motion carries unanimously. to the next item, which is a site plan presentation for Eagle Crossing subdivision, second filing, lot two, block one. Paul, I guess it's your show tonight, Tierna. This site plan presentation has been reviewed in accordance with Article 9, Chapter 17 of the Municipal Code. The site is located to the east of Fairgrounds Avenue, north of um, Crossroads Boulevard. The site zoning is general commercial. The proposed development um, is for a liquor store with the following development characteristics. The lot area is approximately 1.8 acres, including approximately 22% landscaped area. There will be a 20,000 square foot building with 66 parking stalls. The building itself the predominant building materials are split face CMU in earth tone colors. Building height is a maximum of 27 feet. There's a flat roof. There's a covered entry feature and faux windows with display boards around the building. The site plan with Fairgrounds Avenue on the left there. The entrance is located internal to the site and landscaping plan. The building elevations, so the top would be the, the entrance to the building. This would, the bottom would be the facade along Fairgrounds Avenue and the north and south facades as well. As always, this presentation is for Planning Commission's information. Should you have any comments, please forward those to staff at this time so they can be incorporated in the project review. Um, the applicants are present, should there be any questions for them, and that's all I have. Okay. Uh, just my comment is that uh, it's a good looking building. Yeah. So, uh, I think it'll be a good, good fit there. Yeah. Is this a single, single uh, tenant building? Correct. Charles. Question. Uh, you said display boards. Is that for advertising or for what? So it's these. These are faux windows that are. They'll have a glass front, and then there'll be display boards inside that window. So it'd be for sale now. Yada yada. I don't believe the intent is that they would change particularly often. They wouldn't. Okay. Be so they're not. Now. They're not special of the week type. It's so more of a. New Belgium, Coors, advertising like that. And that's, and that's just on the entrance side or on the? 
It's on the entrance side, on the fairground side, and I believe on the um, north side as well. Is any of that going to have neon in it? Lights? I'd have to defer to the applicant on, okay. on that. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Since we don't have an action item on that, we'll move to the next item which is determination of off-street parking requirements in accordance with section 1610-37 of the municipal code. Paul? Thank you. So municipal code section 1610-30A-7 <coughs> states that use is not enumerated in any case where there is a question as to the parking requirements for a use or where such requirements are not specifically enumerated, the Planning Commission shall determine the appropriate application of the parking requirements to the uh, specific situation. In this case, the applicant has submitted a site plan depicting a 20,000 square foot building with 66 off-street parking spaces provided. The municipal code requires one space per every 250 square feet, which would equal 80 parking spaces. So they would be 14 spaces short of the required total. The applicant has requested planning commission approval of the proposed 66 spaces um, rather than the required 80 for an interim period prior to offsite parking being provided. The applicant is working with the subdivision developer and owner of the undeveloped lot to the east of the property. And the plan is to provide an additional 14 parking spaces off-site to meet the minimum parking standard. The applicant and property owner have agreed to provide that parking either at the time of development of the adjacent lot or June 30th, 2019, whichever occurs first. The attached narrative from the applicant uh, includes justification of the request, including the fact that initial parking demand will be met by the 66 parking spaces, and they indicate that retail visits will take some time to increase to a level where additional parking spaces would be needed, as advertising for the store occurs and name recognition increases, and the store usage becomes more habitual for um, residents and additional houses are built in the area. Should Planning Commission approve this request and the recommended conditions, those conditions would be incorporated in a shared parking agreement um, and in the site plan development agreement. So the recommendation is for approval with the conditions listed before you. To summarize, those include an off-site parking agreement shall be executed. The owner of the off-site parking shall provide those 14 spaces um, the off-site parking spaces shall not count towards the parking requirement of that other lot without planning commission approval. And again, the timing of those spaces being provided either at development of the lot or June 30th, 2019. Um, additionally, the use of off-site parking shall run with the land and shall bind all future owners, occupants, and users of the property and it shall remain in effect for perpetuity. And should termination of that par off-site parking occur, the town of Windsor um, could, uh, could revoke a certi certificate of occupancy or um, restrict the use of the building. Um, with that, that's all I have. And again, the applicants are present. Okay. Are we uh, <clears throat> open for questions to either yourself or the applicant? Sure. Okay. Uh, I guess I have a question to the applicant as far as if, uh, can get one of you up here to address that. I was kind of wondering why you wouldn't reduce the size of the building to make the available parking fit on the lot. Um, my, first of all, my name is Danny Bailey. I'm the project manager for everything on this and I'm the general managing partner of Fishers Liquor in Port Collins. Uh, this is Russell Barrett, he's also a managing partner and he will be the managing partner of this store. 
uh, that's there. Um, when we first did the design on this store, um, we did have 80 parking spaces. Um, but because of uh, some big requirements by the developer um, to accommodate fuzzies that's looking at going on the lot below, and also the lot that's going in on the side, they wanted to make some amendments to the lot, um, which would result to us having the first 14 spaces on the other side of the center divide um, to accommodate some of their requests for flow of traffic and the like. So we agreed to, part to that request from the developer, but we did have the size of the lot to meet the requirements for what the planning and zoning did, um, but it was their request that we said, Okay, we will you know, fit into that part of the requirement if it's approved by the board. Okay, understood. Yeah, I personally don't see an issue with this because, you know, when you first open a business, you're not going to be usually packing the parking lot, you know, so uh, I can see as your business grows, that would be a requirement. Well, with the numbers that we did on the forecast, we thought we would be needing, you know, actually Paul actually asked me at one time, do you think you need all those parking spaces? I said, hopefully five years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair. Mr. Patel. <laughs> yeah, I was, that was what I was going to say. You have 66 parking spaces. They're all full and I have a real Maybe problem. Like I have a real problem with the fact that we have a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the Australians would say, which I'm not, by the way, they would say it's no problem. <laughs> but um, Mr. Shinner, I would like to answer one of the questions that you had with regard to the poster boards. Um, those poster boards will be a subtle similarity to coming attraction kind of boards at movie theaters. Um, and so um, if, you're, if you want to look at one of these, um, and the, the planning board looked at this, um, we kind of uh, borrowed the idea from uh, uh, Hazel's Beverage in Boulder. And they're uh, basically four foot square poster boards that ha uh, have the, if you've ever been into a liquor store, you get the basically banner little things that people put in their refrigerators. That's pretty much what will go in there and there'll be self LED lighting behind there. We have no desire or want to have neon signs that look a little bit gaudy uh, on there. So it will be very subtle, but it'll also create a soft light off of the building. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the commission? Mr. Chair. So okay. what's the town's recourse if the development doesn't occur and the developer fails to build that lot by the June 30th of 2019? So the town attorney has worked on the um, parking agreement. It, hasn't been presented to the applicant or the offsite property owner yet. However, it's intended that, I think as I mentioned, the town could revoke a certificate of occupancy if that parking weren't available or take other, other means where they, they might need to close off a portion of the store. Um, hopefully that's something that <coughs> wouldn't need to happen. And just so you know, um, we requested from uh, Martin Lynn and Stuart Lowenstein that a buffer because originally they wanted a line right at the edge of the road that comes in mm -hmm. and we said no um, we wanted at least 10 to 14 foot of asphalt paving and everything to be going on there and also uh, road base to be put on the rest of the property so therefore dust wouldn't be an issue so technically as long as we've got that 14 foot buffer the parking spaces are actually there okay anything else Dave? no any other comments questions Jerry. Jerry. I didn't quite understand. Uh, <clears throat> the 14 spots are going to be paved? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, the asphalt base is going to be down. The lines will not be on because at some point in time, um, I think part of that will actually, it will be more than the 14 uh, spots, basically equivalent to 20. But eventually a couple of islands for landscaping will have to be put into that section uh, to accommodate that. But if necessary, they could be lined at some point in time in the future. Um, I did it twofold to make sure that we had that protection. But also, I, I was very hesitant to have uh, asphalt machines coming in and distressing the entryway coming into the store at some point in time. Um, a little bit about my background, I built uh, Timoth Ranch, I built quite Saratoga Falls, Wild Wing in Timoth. I put all the infrastructure in, I've worked with John Turner for a lot of time. And so therefore, I, I prefer to be preventative to make sure that when they bring their equipment in that there can be no blockage of the main entrance. So that area will be asphalt paved. Other comments, questions? Thought I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to recommend that the Planning Commission <coughs> determine that the parking is ad adequate and uh, 
proposed uh, all the uh, conditions as presented by staff. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Talon, second by Commissioner Boschelman, that we approve the parking proposal as presented by staff with the conditions listed. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes, those opposed vote no. And motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Communication from Planning Commission. Tim? No, sir. Four? No. Heavy on this one? Mm -hmm. Jerry? Nothing no, tonight. No communications. Charles? Yes, sir. It's a question for Ken. Um, the roadway plan, I don't know what the official name is. Is that out on the town website somewhere? I believe it is. It's actually in the town board packet for uh, September 11th. It hasn't been put on the website yet, though, uh, say on planning. So the whole, whole report is in the September right. 11th, so if I go look in there. Right. I've been inquired by quite a few people that I know that they're concerned about the uh, arteries around here being clogged. Yeah, it's... Eat less beef fuel. Yeah. And, and so since you have a plan, I would like to give that plan to sure. them. And I'll, that's a public, public and, document, right? And I'll go ahead and send, you know, we had the two uh, work sessions, but I'll go ahead and send a link to the entire board oh, so be, that way you've got, awesome. got it handled. Awesome. And yeah, that just to reiterate too, that's also a topic that was uh, raised in the community survey that was just completed as well. So right. it's... It's on top of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, second question to staff is, is there a maximum number of advertisement four by eight signs that are allowed on any one particular parcel? Or you can just put as many as you want. Uh, what types of signs are we? Uh, real estate advertising. Um, yeah, I'd have to get, you know, I'd have to look at the signs in question and compare it to the sign code to verify and not give you a shoot from the hip answer. Okay. But uh, there are limitations. It depends on if it's advertising a single lot versus an entire new subdivision or a new filing, that kind of thing. And so um, if you've got specific examples that you'd like to email me, we yeah, can definitely I'll, I'll do, that. do that. So I was just curious, you know. There are limits, and our sign code is uh, a little bit cumbersome. We're working with the code update. We'll hopefully be uh, making it a little bit more user friendly. But I bet there's there's folks out there that make a lot of life out of just rewriting right. ordinances. Right. Are so they round signs? Yeah, they're around signs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they do is signs. That's it for me. Okay. Doug, Town Board Liaison, Ken. I appreciate uh, your question about roadway improvement plan. Uh, that's one of our top priorities for a lot of reasons. And um, so I'm anxious for you to all take a look at it if you haven't seen it. And one of the next steps yet this year is the staff will be recommending to the board how to prioritize um, you know, our next steps on that. So a really critical time, I think, for us to be forward thinking um, with present traffic and anticipated traffic. Um, that's probably the number one issue that I hear from constituents. So I appreciate your question a great deal. Anything else, Ken? No, sir. Communication from staff. Paul? No. Scott? Um, I don't have anything, but uh, I know Carlin did add uh, the code update to the communications. So I actually wasn't able to be there last week. I had to leave town uh, unexpectedly. But uh, there, it sounds like it was a pretty good work session. A couple of the main topics that were discussed were street designs, depending on the context of the development, um, and also open space requirements. Um, requiring quality and not just quantity of open space. And so I, having not been at the work session, I can't really go into a whole lot of detail, but those were a couple of topics that 
were discussed and if you have any questions if you weren't able to make it uh, just let us know but otherwise we'll be sending out the materials for the next uh, meeting before Thanksgiving so it's the end of the month is the next uh, breakfast meeting and then I, I just wanted to clarify one thing since the board's not aware but I know uh, the applicant had referred to fuzzies and we do have a site plan for fuzzies tacos on the adjacent lot it just hasn't come before the board yet because it's still in early in the review but it'll be coming before you shortly so good, good. yeah that's all I had okay crystal anything Nothing. move to adjourn yes we are adjourned <clears throat>